This is a 200 challenge where I'm trying to find weight, strip it out of my 964, make it my dream racer. We have so far found 260 kilos and this time around we're gonna go after the fuel tank, meaning this is bling bling fuel tank time. So this feels a little bit like Christmas Eve when you wake up and it's full of gifts everywhere and you don't know where to start. So I just got a delivery in from Nuke Performance, a lot of good stuff together with the Pyrotech custom made tank that they just made for me. So we're gonna start seeing what all this is and put it together and see how it goes. And we're gonna start here in the front and just look at what in the world I have come up with. So in one of the previous episodes, we discussed why I would take the big tank that used to be there, sitting high and dry up there, replacing it with one of these tanks here. And what I came up with was a cardboard box that I bounced a few times back and forth between me, New Performance and Pyrotech. And we came up with, with a design that, that fits in this, that looks like this. And this is how this guy looks. So what I did was after I had mocked up that cardboard box, I made a CAD design out of that and I sent the 3D file over to the guys at Pyrotech and they came back with the drawing that I later approved and three weeks later I have this. So what I have done here is creating a fuel tank that has an air gap and follows the geometry of the car perfectly here. And this air gap here, it's about 10 centimeters. That's a safety barrier. And on this side here, I've jacked out so that it doesn't interfere with the steering mounts or the stiffenings for the steering. So this tank is about 70 liters and it sits just nice there, moving the weight forward and down, helping the weight distribution of these cars, which naturally is very heavy towards the back. Uh, this fuel cell also is one of the ones that has an internal fuel bladder, meaning that if, if I knock this whole area over, then this will of course deform, but on the inside of this, there's a bladder that keeps all of the fuel on the inside. So this is supposedly the safest way you could do this. It's also full of foam and stuff like that. So let's take this apart and have a look inside. So let's open this bad boy up. We're gonna open this hatch here, take it out. These bolts are imperial, of course, which triggers a little bit of an allergy in me, but I'm gonna let that go. Looking at the quality of the TIG welding here, which is immaculate, perfect. So let's open this up. And this is how it looks on the inside. So actually this is not the fuel tank. This inside here, that's the fuel tank. And it's made of something called ballistic urethane. So this is one of the, the strongest, least terrible materials that you can find. And uh, this is so strong that one of the tests that the guys at Pyrotech told me about was that they filled this up and they try to puncture it with the forklift against the wall and they couldn't. So that makes me very confident having this in the very front of the car because this is stronger than the original tank by all means possible. Another aspect of this is the anti-baffling foam that you have on the inside. So this helps the fuel from slushing back and forth, making the tank behave more like a unit. Another aspect of it is actually that it keeps free gases from roaming around in the tank and uh, makes it safer from an explosion point of view compared to a normal tank where you have all this open gas in the tank and then if something were to happen it's free gases in there. So something needs to go in the place of this hole. What's that? And here we go. This is the fuel cell unit. So this one has all the pumps and all the goodies attached in it. My fuel is going to come out here and it's gonna come back to the tank in this, this attachment here. This is a vent line. This is actually where I fill the fuel and here you can put a fuel gauge. On the bottom, you have your primary fuel pump. So this is actually what pumps fuel over to the engine. And this is housed in a surge tank. So you got a two liter surge tank there. And on the side of this, you actually have a lift pump. So this lift pump goes down into the very bottom of the fuel tank and this is what lifts the fuel from the fuel tank into this. The surge tank is always full of fuel, even if it's essentially empty in the fuel tank. So this is what makes you or enables you to, to really be able to corner at full speed without having really that much fuel left in your fuel tank. There's also some interesting safety measures in this. 
If you turn around, you hear a sound there. And this is actually because there's a non-return valve on the vent here that, that keeps the fuel on the inside if you do this with your car. Really cool. Let's assemble this. And there we go, we got it finished assembled in the end. So what this one is now is the lift pump. These two pumps, they're bespoke for your installation so you get the right capacity for your engine and so on. This one lifts through this little hose here that I knitted down there just nicely into the surge tank that sits like that. And then this goes into this fuel pump here, up here. I done up the electrical connections here and here. So this one is pretty much ready to go. Going to put the surge tank on top of this one, bolt it down, put it back into the tank, and the fuel tank is finished. That doesn't look too bad, does it? I think I'm just going to sit here and look at it for a while. Wow! And for the next little idea I had was actually to put the fuel filter here. Uh, the logic with this is that I have the, the outlet of the tank here. And rather than finding some messy way of pulling that, I could pull the line nicely here, attach to the filter, and then go down there, and then it will come up from there and attach here. So I could get a pretty slick kind of way of having it if I did that. Uh, another little kilo that, that you move from the back to the front, of course, that's, that's not a bad idea that either. Um, the problem with this is I mess up this really nice sticker. So I'm... Um, uh, I'm gonna ask for a little bit of advice from New Performance and then we see whether I put it there or not. And I've taken the fuel tank back out, taken the fuel cell unit out as well. To fit this filter over here, not only do we need to sacrifice this nice little sticker here that by the way, Nuke is gonna give me a new one. Uh, we also need to take it apart because I'm not gonna drill a hole in here and, and risk damaging anything on the inside. So let's take the cover off and we'll also get to see how it looks on the inside. Taking the cover off looks like this. And now we can actually see how the, the fuel cell or in the actual fuel tank, how it looks. Made in the USA, as we can see. And this ballistic urethane bladder, as it's called, this is a really thick thing. And it, you, can, you can feel how it's fiber reinforced. So this is probably bulletproof vest kind of stuff. Really cool. Uh, we're going to get this sticker off. We're going to get the filter on there. I'm going to put it with some round bolts so that it doesn't interfere with this. And we see how that looks. Here we go, the fuel filter will go just nicely over there and I got these flat head screws here that are gonna go from the inside with nuts on the outer side. I can still change the filter without taking this away because this is where I, the fuel filter sits. So I'm gonna mark this up, get the sticker off, drill some holes and then we tango. Next one is fuel line. I stole this from another little project I have with the intake I'm building over there. Uh, this one needs to be shortened. This is an AN8, so this is uh, larger than what I need to have, but this is what I had lying around, so let's make it work. Um, fabricating these steel braided hoses is something that I always hurt myself doing, so let's see if I have any luck here. Uh, I'm gonna mark it up, cut it off, and then shorten it. I think I managed it nicely. The, uh, the, the thing that is always tricky for me is you, the, uh, the braids are so sharp and it's difficult to get them into the coupling. Once you get them into the coupling, then, then it's not an issue. Uh, I tape it before I cut it using this, this really huge cutter. Uh, that's so that I don't have to use a grinder. If you use a grinder, you get the rubber into the hose and that's not very cool. You'd fill up your filter with that crap. Um, the other thing that, uh, that I do is I use one of these. So this is actually aluminum. So this one is very soft. So as you try to tighten this, it doesn't leave any marks. It looks really nice. 
it does look like I managed to get it right this time. The, the hose here fits nicely. No tension in it or anything like that. We got the filter in here. This is really a complete unit now. The only thing missing on this one is how we're gonna tie it down to, to the car so that it doesn't move around. Let's figure that out. And it's a pretty awkward geometry down here. So rather than just testing my way through this, I, I wanna get a really good picture about how this geometry looks below the tank. So I'm gonna lift it out and I'm gonna 3D scan this whole area so that I really have all the data I could ever dream about doing this. With the tank out, we have this awkward area here and we need to figure out how we get some bracketing in there. And uh, I have a little bit of help from my friend Stefan here that has brought his 3D scanner. So let's go wild and just scan this whole thing and see how we fix the tank. 3D scanning is, as you know, a little bit technology from the future. So we have an Ein scan here connected to a computer over here. And we've marked up this area and we're letting the scanner go wild here. And as you do that, it's almost like you're painting the geometry into the computer. Which, of course, will help me tremendously figuring out exactly how I'm going to fit the other components in there. And also, it's really fun. <clears throat> And we've been at this for a while now and got to this. We have a really nice model of the front and uh, the level of detail is, is really high. I can even see my seam welds here that I put into another episode. And this is where my fuel tank is going. So I need to figure out how I'm gonna do with the bracketing of this and get the tank back in there. You think you know your car? I think I know my car. I've had it now for five, five, six years, something. I think it's time to really get to know the car under the skin, so to speak. So we're going to 3D scan the entire car so we know where everything is and things like, such as installing a fuel tank, making the bracketing and all that is much easier if you know exactly how it looks. And we're scanning away, recording how the inside looks. So Stefan here is busy holding the, the camera or the scanner here connected to the computer over there and you're patching the, the whole area together and you need to use some things to, to let the scanner know where it is. So you have some, uh, some spray here, which sprays like a thin layer of some kind of dust. Uh, and you also have markers. So these markers, you place them on the body where you have flat surfaces. This provides a reference for the camera so that it can patch the different areas together and know how they're aligned against each other. Maybe the biggest problem with this is a problem related to my wallet because this Einscan, as it's called, this scanner is so super cool that I just have to get one of these. And they're not cheap, but they're really cool. And we got all the scans done. We took a few extra of components here and there and areas here and there because you never know when you're going to need this. A huge thank you to Stefan for driving all the way up from southern Sweden just to help me out with this. It's, uh, it's going to be good for the future. Let's leave it at that. I've put this into my CAD model now with uh, all the, uh, the area around it, as well as the tank that I already had a CAD model for. And I was looking at doing different version with straps here. But what really struck me when I had it together is that simplicity is really the ultimate sophistication. Let's look at what that means in this instance. In the spirit of simplicity, I might have taken the most overkill path I could ever take with 3D scanning the whole area, sitting there scratching my head in my CAD model, and then in the end, just designing four U-bracket that sits here that are going to be made out of aluminum, and I'm going to TIG weld those to the tank casing here, and then I'm going to be done with it. Maybe, yeah, maybe the most overkill thing I've ever done, uh, 3D scanning the car for this, but you know what, it's really cool, so I'm really happy I did it, and I'm gonna have so much joy of that in the future. And with that, I think it's scoring time. Scoring time it is, and today I got a little bit of news. I have changed my scale to my newly designed homebrew Bluetooth scales. So I have the scale here, I have my computer there, and I can see the scale over there. I'll show you more about these in some episodes to come as I finish my little side project here. Let's weigh the original tank to start off with. One set of original 964 tank together with the mounting system weighing in at 10.5 kilos.
Together with this, we have the filler assembly with some bits and pieces. We have the filter with the accessories. We have some bracketing that I cut, cut out and this big boy, which is the fuel pump, which is gonna go over there. Weighing in at four and a half kilos. So the whole fuel tank assembly with filters, pumps, everything, it's 15 kilos original. And here comes the runner-up. Complete fuel tank assembly, filters, pumps, everything you need weighing in at 13 kilo, meaning we've saved two kilos going to this setup. So what is the benefit of this then, apart from the two kilos of weight saving and the bling bling factor of this fully integrated tank? Well, this is all about weight distribution, moving the fuel tank from here to here. And uh, a 964 that has gone through a diet tends to become very rear heavy with about 63% in the back and 37 in the front. And that's because a lot of the weight savings is actually in this area here. So that, that does a lot for your distribution. Moving the fuel tank from here to here is worth a whole percent in uh, weight distribution. So that's not bad. And also it looks very cool. Uh, this also enables me to do one of my future projects, which is relocating the oil tank to up here, which is worth another about one and a half percent in weight distribution. And I want to have my, my oil tank here rather than down there because it's closest to the engine and here I can put a little bit higher so I get a little bit more head in the tank and that makes the whole operation a lot safer. So that's going to be one of the future episodes. Looking forward to that. For all of you watching, thank you very much. If you like what I'm doing, subscribe to my channel, write me a comment, like my video, whatever you like. Next time around, we're going to do something else crazy. Don't know what yet, but I'll see you then. Thank you very much.